Today we have an insight into the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. The salutations in Arabic are Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and through the entirety of this video I'm going to be using Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So before we get into the life of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, I'm going to give credit to the people who influenced me positively and also give credit to the books that influenced me positively. So my Islamic learning journey started two years ago and the first Muslims I had seen speak about Islam were the great speakers who speak at Speaker's Corner like Mansour, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, Hashim, Shamsi and many others. Also great speakers like Mufti Menk, Dr. Zakir Knight, Osman ibn Farooq, Muhammad Ali, Asim al-Hakim and many more. Also great scholars like Ibn Uthaymeen, Salih al-Fawzan, Ibn Taymiyyah, Abdul Wahhab, Al-Albani and many other great scholars. And most importantly, the influence of the Prophet والسلام, and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them all. As for the books, our editing books that I've read fully or parts of that are great, Many of them are studied online through YouTube series and some of them I've added links to in the description. Okay, so before getting into the small insight into the life of the Prophet والسلام, I will briefly explain what the Quran is. So praise be to Allah. The Quran is the word of Allah. May he be exalted and is not created. And what is meant by that is that Allah, may he be exalted, spoke the words of the Quran which Jibreel alayhi salam heard from him and brought down to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and conveyed it to him. And the angel of revelation who brought it down to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, Jibreel alayhi salam, only heard it from the Lord of glory, may he be exalted, or in Arabic, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he passed it on to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, so he heard it with his ears and his heart understood it. Allah, may he be exalted, says, and verily you, O Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, are receiving the Quran from the one, all wise, all knowing. Chapter 27, verse 6. When we recite the Quran, we recite it with our voices that are created, that cannot resemble the voice of the Lord. The Quran that we recite is the word of Allah, conveyed from him and not heard directly from him. Rather, we recite it with our voices. The words are the words of the Creator, but the voice is the sound of the reciter, as is indicated by the Quran and Sunnah, as well as common sense. So, to get into this small insight about the life, so to get into this small insight into the life of the Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, it was a part of a leaflet that I read. It was a small leaflet, I think it was 50 pages, and it just briefly explained what the Prophet was like and what kind of things he went through and it was quite informative for someone like me and probably for you who is new and wanted to learn more about Islam. So the chapters included in, in the book were chapters about ch his childhood and youth, when the revelations began, social boycott, early hardships, the peace treaty, the Prophet's family and mosque, the conquest of Mecca, the farewell pilgrimage, the spread of Islam after the death of the Prophet والسلام, and many other chapters. And there's many other great, great books to read in regards to the story of the Prophet والسلام, and his biography and what kind of person he was. It is important to mention that it is hard to summarize the life of the Prophet والسلام, because it was so tremendous and beautiful. So much happened that summarizing his story is a disservice to him and his mission of spreading Islam. I plan on going through a few key moments. He is the best example for mankind. And that is very important to mention because the events that happened in his life were so vast and so much things had happened that just a brief explanation is such a disservice to the life of the Prophet I've added links in the description to great speakers giving the seerah of the Prophet and they use great references and they're very well informed, way more than me on, on this topic. So. Make sure you check those out. The Prophet received his first revelation at age 40 and the Prophet's wife Khadija was the first revert to Islam. The Prophet والسلام, was known for his honesty, trustworthiness and good character before and after his prophethood. After his first call to Islam publicly on Mount Safa, the people deemed him mad and disregarded his words. 
including his uncle Abu Lahab. So of the early hardships, there was one main reason for the Quraysh to reject the Prophet ﷺ. Mecca was a center of pilgrimage because of the Kaaba, which housed 360 of the neighboring tribes and nations. So the Prophet ﷺ coming into this area and advocating for Tawheed and oneness, it caused a lot of conflict between the Prophet ﷺ and the Quraysh. But not all of the Meccans were hostile. There were some who gave serious thought to the message of Islam and the Quran and gradually accepted Islam. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ faced many people in his lifetime who did not believe in him. And for me, this is a great reminder that although I faced my own trials and tribulations, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ faced many trials and tribulations and the people at that time had seen things like torture, murder, people getting robbed, people starving, losing their homes, having to migrate and for you and me that could be a perspective shift of I can be more grateful that my life could have been more difficult and I could have seen these things and I could have gone through these trials and I'm lucky enough to not have to go through these things. So the Prophet ﷺ was a simple man. Despite his position as leader, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ never behaved as if he was greater or better than other people. He never made people feel small, unwanted or embarrassed and the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was never greedy. He ate very little and only simple foods. He preferred to never fill his stomach. And for me, the Prophet ﷺ is an example for me and for all of mankind. So I look to him as an example for what to do. And he is someone I look to when I want to know what to do in the big decisions in my life and the small decisions in my day-to-day -day life. Simple living and contentment were key teachings in the Prophet's life. When you see a person who has been given more money and beauty than you, look then to those who have been given less. In so doing, you will thank God for his blessings rather than feel deprived. And this is one of the main things I mentioned in my newsletter insight about practicing gratitude. And I learned this from the Prophet It's such an effective way to be grateful for what you've been bestowed and not to be ungrateful and arrogant and entitled. So I will end this video with this. In the last sermon of the Prophet Muhammad he said, there is no superiority for an Arab over a non-Arab, nor for a non-Arab over an Arab. Neither is the white superior over the black, nor is the black superior over the white except by piety.